Hi there, Julia Neiman here with Donovan Dreyer and our special guest today, Andrea Samadhi. Andrea is a formal middle school, former middle school teacher who began working with success principles with students in the late 1990s. In 2014, Achieve It 360 was chosen as a preferred, preferred provider for character education and social and emotional learning programs in Arizona. And Achieve It 360 is the name of Andrea's company. Her programs grounded in evidence-based research and neuroscience help parents, teachers, and coaches to increase learning at home and in the classroom by reducing stress. So Andrea, we are so happy to have you here today and maybe you can help us all de-stress. Thank you so much, Julia and Donovan for having me in your program today. Oh, welcome, welcome. Hey, uh, we talked a little bit before we got rolling here and Julia and I are really excited to really get focused in on how you have this kind of magic moment where you really know you've found your passion. So this is the Monetize Your Passion Academy. This is what this is all about. And you've got just a great story. So let's zoom right in on that out of the gates. So absolutely, when you are good at something, you know that you're good at that one thing. For me, I knew probably in my teen years that I was good working with other kids. And so I started working with other kids. I chose to teach swimming lessons and lifeguarding back then. So it was something that I always knew. I was always interested in helping people, um, young people with a skill or a talent that I was good at, that I had mastered. So it, it was, it's always in you, you know what you're good at. So right now, if there's a teen out there watching this, they know one or two things they're good at. Um, I always in school as a teenager found those students that were good at math because I was not good at math and we traded. So I helped them understand English for say, if that was their area of weakness and they helped me with foil and algebra one, but you, you know where your strengths are and you also know where you need help. So at an early age, I knew how to start asking for help to get the knowledge that I knew I needed. So now let's fast forward. Now there's nothing that you cannot learn. Everything is accessible online. If you don't know something, you can Google or go to YouTube or go to udemy.com or lynda.com. There's all these learning places to go. So now it's not an excuse to say, I don't know something. So the answers to everything is now here. It's just, do you know what you want to learn? Do you know what your strengths are? How are you gonna help other people? And how are you gonna to continue to develop your talents and strengths to really make it in the world? So you, one thing I wanted to do, like we talked a little bit beforehand and uh, if you could rewind a little bit and hit, hit that point, you have this like magical moment in your life uh, so you, you kind of took us from the beginning part to, to where you're at now, maybe, or where the world is at now. What was this magical moment in the late 90s for you? Definitely. So I ended up, I was a school teacher because that's what you do. You know, you, you figure out, you go through school and you figure out what you're supposed to do. And um, my family was in teaching. So that's what I did. I just followed the, the path. And then there was a moment when I got interested in a certain other direction. It was the speaking industry. I don't know where it came from. I definitely was not outgoing. I was very shy and quiet, but my neighbor worked for a very popular speaker in Toronto and it just interested me. I started hanging out at his office, seeing what he was doing, watching him sell to other people these seminars that were teaching skills to adults. And it intrigued me to such a, an extent that I quit my teaching job and broke my contract and went a completely different path from where my parents were kind of hoping that I would go. Uh, thank goodness I had uh, one parent was supportive that said, you can do it, Andrea, just go. Go the path that you think you're supposed to go. And so I went and worked in this industry. This speaker ended up working with young teenagers and it was at a moment that I saw an older man doing teaching skills to teenagers that I just couldn't in the classroom. And I had a teaching degree. 
and the students weren't listening to me because I wasn't engaging with them. I wasn't teaching them, motivating them from within. I was just teaching them the curriculum. But I watched this man motivate 12 kids from within to get the things that they wanted, and it hit me in the stomach. This is what's missing. I'm not, the 30 kids in my classroom, I was missing it. They, I, I didn't know what they wanted out of life. I, had, I had, didn't have a clue. I knew that I was supposed to be teaching them science and, and language arts, but I had no idea what did they want for themselves. So when I saw that, that this was what this person was doing, that was it for me. I knew I was meant to help young people figure out what they're good at, what do they want, and help them develop that pathway to their, to their goal. You know, I, I want to add something here. I think that that's amazing that you, ha you mentioned that you felt like you got hit in the stomach. And that's oftentimes how when you discover your purpose or you have this big aha moment, you know it's real because you feel it in your whole body. And right. you know it's real. And I admire you very much for going, oh my gosh, this is what I should be doing and changing your whole life to do it. I was lucky because I was younger. So, you know, a lot of people have these aha moments and they're in the middle of a career <laughs> You know, or I can't imagine if I had two kids saying, okay, I, I got to quit what I'm doing and go do this. So I, it, just the timing was right for me that, that it happened at a young age. But that's also why I thought this is important for me to help kids figure it out early instead of in their 40s or 50s when they have to make a life change. Like I can see Donovan is relating there. Yeah. Exactly. And that happened to me too, but I was even older. So when I had to change my career, because you know, I was a clinical social worker and at age 60, I had to change my life. And I'm glad I did. I mean, it wasn't, I didn't feel a need to, but circumstances made it impossible not to. And, and I'm glad I did because I'm really enjoying this part of my life a lot and doing, I was working my purpose before, but now it's even more meaningful for me and has a bigger impact in the world and allowed me to create my mission to end youth unemployment. So that wouldn't happen if circumstances didn't make it so. So sometimes the universe just puts you on your path and you don't really have a choice. You know, That's you true. They say, they say, you know, some people are worried that they're going to miss the boat. And from what I've seen, the boat will keep coming back for you and coming back for you. You're never going to miss the boat when you're, you're going to wake up in the middle of the night and you're going to be knowing I should be doing this. It's going to be so clear to you once you found it, once you've figured it out. It, you're not missing that boat. It's going to keep coming until you decide, okay, I'm jumping on the boat now, whatever age or at po what point in your life you're jumping on. Yeah. Well, I think you, you jumped into, Andrea, you jumped into teaching and that wasn't, that was maybe the right boat, let's say for a while. And then you jumped ship, so to speak. Uh, what I find is that boat doesn't necessarily come around and say, hello, I'm a boat. And you do have to be intentional to figure out why oh, um. he's freezing he's having internet connection problems today this is real life folks <laughs> in the middle of an interview the interview goes, <laughs> the internet goes out it's just that's technology and it can't be helped sometimes but i think i'm pretty sure we're still recording andrea yes so, um yeah so Let's talk about how you, you got the idea for Achieve It 360 and, and what's it, what is it about and how can students use this? Definitely. So it's evolved over the years. Back in the late 90s when I saw this speaker helping the young, the young students figure out their passions and purpose and, and really get the things in life they wanted, I started to create a curriculum of my own back then. And that's where my first book, The Secret for Teens, came from. It was really based on everything the speaker was teaching adults. I took my teaching experience and I created a curriculum to help young people with their attitude, with goal setting, with confidence, everything all in one. Now, 
the brain-based part came in when I actually went into schools and there were some things in the book like visualizing that weren't evidence-based. We couldn't prove these things. So I really had to learn more skills myself. I had to study with a neuroscience researcher. And here I had some people helping me along the way. They said, if you really want this to be successful, you need this. And it's, again, like I said before, there's no excuse anymore to say, I don't know that. You've got to go out and figure it out. You've got to go find the people to help you learn that. that there's no excuse anymore. Otherwise, you're just going to, someone else will do what you're supposed to be doing. So you've got to put in the work. When someone's telling you to go a certain direction, you've got to be open to learning. And so that's where level up the brain-based part came in. So not only now do I have the visualizing part, but now I understand that it's neurological. So you can rewire your brain and that's evidence-based. Based on the actions and thoughts and habits that you're doing, you can break bad habits, you can break um, old pathways and create new pathways and have new results in your life. So that's really what it is now. It's, uh, it's, a, it's a book. We've got the Level Up book here. If you go to my website, it is actually the ebook is available for download. You could just put in your information and it's free. If anyone wants to have a look at what it is, um, that's the brain-based side. And uh, that's really how it evolved from what I saw the, the speaker doing to what I must have in the classroom. If I'm going to be talking to students in the classroom and helping um, educators with this, I really needed it to be evidence-based, like prove this works. And this is proven to work. You know, we have um, a portion in the beginning of the program in the mindset piece, we do visualization. So it's like visualize, there's a guided visualization of like, what is your perfect life for you? So can you talk about that? I mean, what kind of things do you take your kids through when you talk about visualization? Definitely. It's, it's everything that you want. You've got to see it first. So it's seeing it in your mind's eye first and then taking the positive action steps towards that goal. So it started out really back with uh, Jack Nicholas. He was the first one, I think, that started talking about it. He started doing it in golf visualizing uh, that ball where it's going to go. If you're a runner, visualizing that race. You know, our, our track coach used to have us walk the race. Well, don't only physically walk it, but walk through your race in your mind. And just like I'm talking about with the neural pathways, that thought goes through a neural pathway in your mind and creates that experience so that you've done it once in your mind, twice in your mind, suddenly it becomes real. It's a real pathway. It's not just hocus pocus that I'm thinking about it. It's actually paving a pathway so that when you actually do it, it becomes easier and it makes sense. Yeah, I, ha I have a ridiculous story with that. I was actually debating with another school counselor as we went around the golf course and we got to a par five where it's going to take, you know, basically three shots to get to the green. So we're, I was telling like this visualization, visualization really matters. And, you know, I lined up my shot and I hit my ball within a few feet of his after the drive. So we got to keep the conversation going. And then the next ball I hit uh, right next to his as well. And we were both about 110 yards away from the hole. And he hits his shot like almost in the hole from 110 yards away. And he just goes, oh, I just can never get lucky. And I said, well, you just got to think that that ball is going to go in. And he's like, shut up. <laughs> and, uh, I walked up to my ball and hit it in the hole from about 110 yards away. And I just said, see, put my club in the bag, no expression. And I was like thinking in my, in my, <laughs> in the inside, oh my God, I can't believe that happened. Uh, but then I'm like, okay, I'm always going to believe that happened from now. I'm never going to have to really debate about this again. You know, I don't need to convince anybody else. Uh, I mean, I will, I'll never need to convince myself again. So that was just right. like one of those ridiculous life moments that just cemented that lesson in big time for me. Definitely. With everything, like um, when you want something, cut out a picture of yourself 
already uh, having achieved that thing, put it up on the wall. So I have my kids do, every time we're on break, I have them cut out pictures of the things that they want to do and they put it on these sheets of paper. And whether or not we do all of them, but at least they've thought, you know, what do I want to do this break? These are the things I want to do. And then they put it on a board and then we check it off if we get it. And it's just basic goal setting, but like you said, think it first. Yeah, it's powerful. What's another, what's another big takeaway that you'd love people to have, you know, if, they, if they're not reading your book or haven't read your book yet, what's another pullout that you'd love for, you know, young adults to have? It's, it's probably that they could have anything that they want. They're really the only limit to their success is their thoughts and their mindset. Uh, because, you know, if you go back 20 years ago, if you would have said, you know, Andrea, what do you really want? Well, I really wanted to live in Arizona. I really wanted to, you know, have the things that in my life that I really wanted to have, I just couldn't even imagine that. And I got all those things very quickly. But then as you move forward, you, you realize it's not, it's not about the things anymore. It's about how you can give back and help others. So it, it's, to set those bars really high for yourself because you're going to get them. It, it's just going to be how long are you willing to stick through? They'll come. And I have people that come and they've, you know, watched me along the, the, the years and they're, they're like, you stuck through this. That's the only reason that you got it. I'm like, it's not the only reason. There's so many little, other little parts. It's, it's the belief in yourself. It's the sitting at your desk and your mindset's bad. What strategy are you going to have for yourself to get yourself back up there? You know, you've got to know how to look after your body, your energy, your nutrition, your sleep, all those things come in for you to be able to sustain a vision until you get it. So, yeah, the, the thing I find with lots of kids, though, is they don't have that, you know, so they've lost the belief. They don't have strategies. They really are. At, and they're also not at a place where outside of Googling, they're willing to get help. They're not raising their hand in the classroom or in the classroom of life, you know, there's, there's amazing opportunities for people to reach out and get the help they need. But um, that just isn't a super, uh, just that's not an understanding that everybody has, even now, uh, as we get more and more open to getting coaching or help or support or whatever. Um, tell, tell us a little bit about if you're struggling with that belief, and you kind of almost have a, like internal side of you that doesn't want to let anybody know, that you're struggling, how do you overcome that, that situation in, in yourself? Definitely. Well, I can give you some, some examples. I've always along the, the pathway of what I've been doing, had five or six young people that reach out to me. They reach out and they just say, hey, I'm here and I'm struggling at what I'm doing. Maybe they tried a hot dog stand and it didn't work out, or they tried some sort of business and they just email me through Facebook usually and say, hey, you know, it's me, I'm doing this and it didn't work out, but I just want to stay tapped into you. So it's staying tapped into someone, an adult that, that can guide you along the way. Sometimes I would give like little bits of advice. Well, it's okay, try a different angle. So it's just, first of all, identifying a mentor who's going to be there to help you. There, there's got to be a bunch of mentors through your group that people can reach out to and stay connected to. So this one person, his name is Dante Dre Winrow. He's been reaching out to me since he's been in eighth grade. So Dante's done a lot of things for Achieve It 360. He's done videos. He's written articles. Well, fast forward, Dante's graduated high school. His stuff is out there in the world. The person interviewing Dante for a traffic commissioner position in his town in Westminster, California, saw one of his articles and hired him. So Dante's life was really set. He had people along the way that watched what he was doing. If you're a go-getter, you ask for help, you put yourself out there in the world, and people will see that they'll they'll give you breaks and i've had so many people help me along the way so many people have reached out and said try this way here it's not working this way take this idea so you'll you'll only get help though if you're if you're putting yourself out there and people can see that you're trying no one's gonna reach out if they don't know 
do you have something for for this those young people out there young and there's it's not just young people it's like everybody can struggle with the reaching out part and and like you're talking about the people that come to you and sounds like that's just like amazing like the magic that can happen with that when they actually reach out for the help but what about that that internal struggle what is the kind of invisible line that that people need to get past and maybe how do they do that yeah, it's definitely, first of all, identifying someone that you connect with. You're not going to start reaching out to somebody um, for help that you don't connect with. So, for example, there was one girl that I had helped that wanted to go to NYU film school. So she was a teenager and she started to think, well, who am I going to reach out to? So via Twitter, she started reaching out to celebrities for film school advice. She started just finding celebrities that she liked and saying, hey, I'm, I'm trying to get into film school. What advice do you have for me? And then people like Johnny Depp and all these people that were important in her life started answering her back. And I'm telling you, that put her on fire. She was going to film school. It didn't matter what they said, but that person that was important to them answered her. And, and it's happened to me too. If you watch Shark Tank or you, you admire Damon John or Robert Herjavec and they answer a tweet, it's, it's pretty neat. So it's just identifying who do you identify with that you would like some advice from. And they might not, you know, start being your friend or anything like that, but get motivated from somebody somehow, reach out, ask for advice, through social media, it's so easy that way because people have their phones with them. And I'm telling you, even people like Damon John, Robert Herjavec, they get their tweets. If you send something that connects to them, they'll retweet it. Um, I sent something to Rob, Rob, Robert Herjavec once about his life upbringing. I saw some sort of YouTube about his start and I copied him on it. I tweeted, I said, look at Robert Herjavec and he retweeted it. I got so many followers from that. So it's just finding out who do you connect with and trying through social media and it might not work. Try a different person the next time. Have maybe 15 or 20 people that you want to get some advice from, some support and then, and then just keep going and you'll find the help that you need. It, it's just going to come from within. When you, someone writes back, you're going to get on fire. You know, I'm hearing a theme in some of the things you're saying, and that's persistence. True. So, you know, just like figure out what you need to do and then just keep going for it. And mm -hmm. so many things that you mentioned, uh, you know, um, asking for advice and a mentor. We actually have an exercise about building a dream team. We talk about who to look for and, and how to ask them. And get, get not just one person, but a group of people that each specialize. Like if you're going to start a business and you're going to make a lot of money and you know nothing about money, maybe you need to talk to somebody who has that experience about money. Maybe it would be a bookkeeper or you know somebody more like a financial advisor so it's knowing what you need and then who to reach out to and having like i have a team i have technical people on my team i have donovan on my team and and some of the people that we've interviewed for this series are my mentors they're people that i've learned from and people that i know that i can go to so it's not, I mean, I want everybody to know that I want kids to understand it's not just you. We as adults ask people all the time, what can I do better? Do you have a different strategy for me? This isn't working. And the more that you can open yourself up to do that, the easier things will be for you. And you'll get really clear pictures on which direction to take. So I'm glad that you've mentioned that more than once because it's really important. Definitely. Yeah, maybe, maybe we do a great job of that modeling. Heck, we, I ask eight-year-olds and 12-year-olds on how to do technology <laughs> stuff. They're some of those guys. Some of my daughters uh, got the skills when it comes to the technical solutions. <laughs> right. His eight-year-old daughter is helping us with graphics for the, for the launch. Oh, yeah. I'm telling you that I have, like on the back of my book, I have a teen um, Samantha Roberts, who did all my graphics for the book because she knew better. And the title Level Up came from an 11 year old because I wanted the book to be called something brain based. 
this or that and you put that in front of young people and they say oh you're missing the mark let's do level up that makes more sense and and you know it connects to leveling up in video games as well as life yeah and something yeah. kids can relate to right all right so you know as we as we uh you know, look to what the kids are going to do, you know, beyond high school into their, and, and maybe, you know, some of it, I guess if you take a step back and you're looking at somebody of any age, what do you think in the modern times is one of these main, uh, like missed tools and, and that is kind of uh, something that kids can use to level up or, you know, young adults can use to level up and it's overlooked or maybe it's just not part of the traditional education system that you you know, saw everybody did automatically and I did automatically in the 90s. What's one of these, one of the new things that people need to be aware of and, and start to apply to level up their lives these days? Definitely. I'd say it's definitely their mindset. So there's a psychologist that is famous for growth mindset, where she's from Stanford and uh, any educator would know Carol Dweck and her theory. But for a young person, it's really just your mindset determines where you're going to go. So what you think of yourself, um, whether you think that your, your brain or your mindset or your life or your results can be changed from your actions. So it's not fixed. It's not that, you know, gosh, if I was fixed and, and I had this mindset, like I, I, I'm not good at math. Well, it still comes up. Uh, math is not my strength, but it does not determine where I'm going. So I always know who I need to go ask for help with my financials and have help there. But my mindset is that my results are changeable based on the things, the actions that I take. And only I can determine my results because when life happens and everyone goes out the door, it's what am I going to do with my day? I could sit here and be productive or I could waste my time. So what, what's my mindset like? And, and that's got to come from within. It's like I can be in control of where I'm going or I can say life has just put me here and I'm stuck here and I can't change it. But that's not true. You know, the, the new way of thinking is that we really have control over where we're going, our life. We can have anything we want. It, nothing is impossible these days. That's really exciting, I think, that we could really create and think about the life that we want and make it happen. It, nothing is, is uh, out of range, which that's the one thing I want young people to see that if you want it now, I'm not saying just dream it and it's going to happen. There's work involved. There's figuring out pieces that you don't know who you, who's going to help you with this piece and that piece, but every piece is attainable for you. Very nice. Um, so as we're looking at putting these pieces together, is it just think big and then everything falls into place uh, and you should go for that biggest, you know, like they call it the BHAG, the big, hairy, audacious dream or goal. Uh, or are there some like small pieces to this that maybe you go for the easiest thing sometimes? That's what I do a lot of times with kids. It's like we can pick what's most important and top priority and really, really challenging or it's like, wow, let's throw you a bone here. There's a lot going on. There's a lot up in the air right now. Let's find a foothold with something ridiculously easy to get some confidence. What would you say about, about those kind of choices on how you proceed? Definitely what you just said there was the confidence. So you try for a small goal first and it builds your confidence. And then there's that confidence competence loop. So when you're confident, you become comp competent at what you're doing. And then you stretch a little bit, you learn something new and you become competent at that or good at that. And then that becomes easy. And with confidence, you stretch again. And so that big goal is reachable with confidence and with that little stretch. So what I'm saying is that let's just say you're here and your big goal is here. You need to have someone that's helping you with those strategies and tactics along the way. So a mentor will guide you because you're not going to know the way. There's going to be a place where you get stuck and you say, I, I don't know the way. 
I'm often stuck there and I have so many people helping me get beyond that because I could be stuck and just say, oh, this is about as far as I can go on my own in my own world here, but that I, I want to get here. And in order to get there, you're going to have to have help along the way, but start with the, the small things that give you the confidence, the win, and then you become com competent. So that confidence competent loop is what I would hope that, that they could see. Keep improving and keep reaching and keep reaching until eventually you say, I want that. And you're going to have to figure that out. How are you going to get there with help? Nice. So now look to a map. You know, it's like you have, you, if a map is useless unless you know where you're going because you have all these streets, but if you have no idea where you're going, how do you know what street to take? So you start with the big picture. That's why we do the visualization. You start with the big picture. You know exactly what you want for your life. And then you go back to the beginning and go, okay, now I'm at the beginning of the path. What steps do I need to take to get there? And what streets do I need to take? I don't know if you can see this, but this is on my desk. I don't know if we could, Zoom yeah. yeah, you can see it. It's just a road map. So where are you starting? Where are you and where's your big goal? Where are you going? And then all the little things you need to do in the middle. So that's always on front of in front of me at all times. You have to keep your head on the big picture and you gotta know the small little steps and you will get stuck in the middle and you have to have support and a team and your mentors that say, all right, let's try this way now. That's really good. I'm, I'm going to share something really quick that I've uh, used to show the map too. So for me, like this visual is you need to find who you are. So that's like looking at a puzzle piece. Then you need to find the destination. That's like where the puzzle piece goes. And then you got a path that's not necessarily a straight line. Uh, you know, and I think Bob Bowman and Michael Phelps did a great job too of showing how you deal with each little incident all the way down to like, which rap song do you use? Uh, you know, do you listen to beforehand? How do you get up on the podium and get down? Don't change that. We're looking at a hundredth of a second. Don't waste any of your energy on these decisions. So it's, you know, it's really powerful to think about, you know, what, what this process is and how do you handle, uh, you know, some of these tough challenges. There's, there's actually a visual I showed of Michael Phelps within in one of my posts too, but we'll, uh, that's, we'll save that for another time. But, uh, you know, the, the idea is you're going to keep having, you're going to keep getting pushed or you're going to push yourself on purpose, but that's where the confidence comes from. We don't get 8 billion pats on the back or, you know, a million compliments to feel confident or self-esteem or have self-worth. It's actually the, the challenges that you go for and, and continue to make the progress that uh, gives that confidence. Definitely. So, Andrea, do you have any particular strategies or things that we can, you know, give to kids today or whoever's listening, adults as well? You know, what can they do to get there? What can they do to change their mindset? What, you know, what does that look like? The first step is who are you hanging out with? That's that's the basics here. So if you're hanging out with go-getters, you're going to be in the right place. With adults, with teens, who, who are you hanging out with? Your top five people. And if you know in your heart when you're not hanging out with the right people, there might be doing things that are just not in integrity with you. So that's the basics. You're not going to go where you need to go if you're not in integrity. So that's the first step. It's being integrity with your own values, your own thoughts. Um, that's the, the very first step. So being integrity, who you hanging out with, and then it's the action steps. Then it's the motivation's got to come from it within. So you've got to know your why. Simon Sinek talks about it. You know, what's, why are you doing this? Because there's going to be times when you're going to want to not do it. And you've got to remember. So, you know, the, the why behind it is so important. Why do you want to do this? What's it going to be? It's not just for things. It's for what contribution to the world are you going to have? How are you going to help other people with your talents and skills? And that's going to sustain you. So 
knowing your why is important. And then you, you've got to be like, you have a, a perfect system. You've got to be surrounded by people to infuse more knowledge. You've got to be a lifelong learner. Um, it's, it's never over. My, my young girls are having a hard time because back to school was this week. And I explained back to school is ongoing. It's never stopping. You know, as I'm writing my program, I'm researching new theories, new ideas, new strategies. It's, it's ongoing. So being a lifelong learner, um, knowing where you can go to learn, who are you choosing to learn from, like you have a great system here of, of lessons um, to continue to learn. So I think that's really, if you can be doing those things, starting out with who you're hanging out with, being an in integrity, um, having the right mindset, and being a lifelong learner, you're, that, that's a good kickstart you know, to where you're supposed to go. And then adding in, there's a bunch of things. Make sure that you're nourishing yourself so you have energy to do this. Are you getting enough sleep? Are you eating right? There's a lot of things all involved in getting the things that you want. You can't be motivated and sitting there uh, doing something and being productive if you're exhausted. So that's a part of it. Make sure you know how to uh, rest and rejuvenate from high intensity work or thought or study. Make sure you take breaks. That's all a part of the, the power of the brain. You can't be all intense all at once and, and keep going and expect to be intense. You've got to take a break, go walk away, listen to music, have your rejuvenation strategy. So I think if you can start there, you're, you're on and ready to go. I think Julia really hit on, Julia and I, when we connected on this idea of doing this, uh, the summit that leads into the, into the academy, and then also continuing to interview more and more and more people, totally covers your step one of who you're hanging out with. I mean, we are literally curating the type of people that we want young adults to hear from, learn from. You know, if, if she and I maybe haven't been the, the world beaters that they should only listen to us, awesome, that's fine we'll just invite in all these other, you know, guest professors, so to speak, these guest teachers that are able to have, you know, they're listening in their earbuds maybe to these interviews or, uh, you know, they get this opportunity to have the people brought to them. So if they're struggling with who to hang out with, that was basically one of the huge ideas behind uh, making this possible for kids or young yeah. adults. Definitely. So everybody really, you guys are like everybody we interview, right, Julia? I mean, who, who can't really uh, benefit from, from these amazing interviews? Yeah, no, that's really true. And everybody has been so generous. They've all agreed. Like if, if anybody's listening or as the program, they're moving through the program, you know, and they have questions. It's like we have, we're going to have a private Facebook group and they can ask the questions. And all of these speakers have said, oh, yeah, I'll come back and field questions in my area. So they're going to have ongoing connection. So one of the things we're doing is shortcutting them, the, our students, to relationships. Definitely. It's huge. But there's such a need here. So we see it. And then the young people that come in, when they get on fire and start creating and start having success stories, that's when it's going to become powerful because then they're going to be the speakers in your program motivating the other young people. And that's when the young people will take notice because they'll be like, oh, watch what this person did. That's the power of it. Yeah, yeah that's, that's what we really believe in. And uh, it's been awesome to have such powerful people come in and help us with that. So um, then like jumping over to the, to the part where uh, you talk about um, oh shoot, I lost my train of thought. Julia, take over if you got a, if you got a good question here. Um, I'll, I'll regather myself. <laughs> you lost your train of thought. I totally did. Okay, see, here we go. Here's another like glitch. This is real life. <laughs> and you just move on, right? So, okay, so, um, so if somebody has this big dream, this is, I'm, I'm, I want to see if we can pull out some more strategies you know, steps that they might be able to take. So they have this big dream and they know they can do it, but maybe they're kind of feeling a little negative about other things in their life. You know, you mentioned nutrition. We, we have in the program 
and we call it the four pillars and all of those things you have a morning routine you know something to get you ready for the day because if you look at athletes athletes have a routine they have an exercise maybe it's something that gets them in the frame of mind they need to be in to get out there and compete and win and we're not we're not encouraging competition where we think that collaboration is the new competition and so yeah. we don't we don't want to encourage competition in the way that athletes compete it's like competing with yourself competing yes. with yourself to do better rather than competing with somebody else right but maybe they're feeling discouraged and i know i've gone through that some days you want to just go to bed and pull the covers over your head and and i have to remind myself you can't do that but is, is there anything that you recommend that people could do as an exercise maybe definitely definitely to move forward yeah this is huge so you have to have that daily routine and building that into your life if you start when you're a teen imagine when you're 40 and 50 that you don't have to do that start over again because i see a lot of people trying to start now and it's hard but start young with a routine of waking up early that's the first thing try to see how early you can get up now I, I had a hard time when I lived in Toronto waking up early because it was dark out. So that's why I moved to Arizona. One of the reasons is because I was more productive here. So making sure, first of all, that you know you have a, a system or a routine. I meditate. So um, there's tons of free meditations that you can do. And, and I don't mean like sit here and go, hmm, but have something that you wake up and that starts your brain going like some sort of mantra that infuses what you want into your life. It, it can be something like uh, some sort of loop tape that you create for yourself. You could do it yourself, your own voice, like your own affirmations, something that gets you going in the mindset. So wake up early have some sort of meditation thought process where you calm down, organize your day, make sure you get a good breakfast, eat right, um, exercise. If you can do all of that before, and I'm saying early, I'm up at 4.30 in the morning. So that's what I've had to do to be able to be ready by seven and eight. I'm done all that stuff and I'm on, but that might not be everybody's forte. They might say, okay, I, I need to get my sleep and wake up a little bit later and do it, it, it all, it's all dependent on that person. But having a system of what works for you and a, a motivational system. So yeah, there's times that, you know, I'm focused on my children and I've let my routine go because I was working on something else and I need now to go back and refocus. So I might go hiking and push it and listen to Brendan Burchard, something that, that puts me back into the motivation of what I need to do. But we all have our own thing of what works for us, but it's finding that thing. And then knowing when you're on, when do you feel on? And then try to replicate that every day. It's not just, I'm gonna be on Tuesday and Friday. It's now let's do it again, let's do it again, until it's a habit. And then that habit, it progresses you on so it, it moves you there's you know even if you have a bad day well having a bad day but you've done like one or two things instead of all of your things it's not terrible you're ahead of most of the game and that's the thing you say you don't want to compete I, I understand you want to collaborate but if you can just do a little bit more than the average you're gonna win in a huge way so the average person out there doesn't get up early, doesn't know what they're working towards, they don't have goals. We want to just be a little bit more than that to, to win in the world, winning our life, winning the game of life, be a little bit more than the average. And that's what Bob Proctor, my mentor, would call the razor's edge. That's how you win a race. You win by a fraction of a second, just by being a little bit better than the rest. You don't have to be it's a whole bunch better. You just have to be a razor's edge better. So that's what I'd say. Don't be so rough on yourself. That's a good one. And one thing I heard you say that I want to point out is repetitive action is what creates new habits. And isn't that what overwrites the brain, right? You can create the new grooves in the brain by repetitive action. So that's why having a routine 
is really important. You're setting yourself up with that repetitive action. And I know, you know, I have a couple of things I do, but the most important, I think, that really gets me in the right frame of mind for the day is I do a gratitude list. A friend of mine gave me a journal as a present, and I'm, what am I going to do with this? I know. I'll, I'll do it. And every day I get up and I write at least 10 things I'm grateful for. Wow. That, yeah, you can't go wrong. If, you can't be negative if you're thinking positive because your brain can only focus on one thing at a time. So when you're being grateful, that's the frame of mind you're in. Yeah, the attitude of gratitude. Yes. <laughs> yeah, and I found it really changed my life. Definitely. You know, really uh, changed my life. And, and little things that, like um, with money. You know, I, I grew up with a lot of limiting beliefs about money, and it wasn't until I was much older that I realized the hold that those beliefs had on me. I didn't even know they, I didn't know anything about them until I started doing inner work and then like, whoa. So instead of like going, okay, I'm not good with money and I'm, I, and I'm not, but what I started to do was keep track of my finances. I had the intention that I was going to know every minute of every day, you know, what my financial situation was. And just focusing on that, I have a, a you know, a book with columns in it, and I write all my bills, and I keep track of when they're due, and, and my income, and when it's, pay and just knowing that changed everything about my relationship to money, and it changed money's relationship with me. Definitely, that's a powerful activity, to know money in, money out. Yeah. Not everyone knows that, so that's, that's a huge activity. Yeah, and, in, and you don't have to be good about money or numbers. I mean, you know, numbers and I do. I always joke, I don't get along with numbers. Numbers and I are not friends. Me too. But, yeah, you were talking about math. And, you know, right. it's been like, I can't tell you how many years, like 40-something years since I graduated high school. And I have never used algebra once, not once, since I graduated high school. But, um, but it's okay. I got through it, you know. So, um yeah, I just think that's important to, to like be intentional. You mentioned that earlier. You have to be intentional about things. You have to focus on things, especially if they're not your strengths. Right. And, and sometimes like with the really big parts of money and the business and all, I, I hire somebody. Yes. But I still have to know where I am at all times with the money coming in and the money going out. And that's not to say I'm always flush. And it doesn't really matter because then I know when I have to work really harder and put in more effort to bring that in to be covered. So anyway, that's what I wanted to say about it. You have to be intentional. Definitely. Donovan, you wanted to say something. Yeah. Okay. Well, I, I, you, you kind of, as you were weaving into some of the things that you were uh, picking up from when I just like lost my train of thought, you hit on one of them again. And so as you're going through the order of things from who you're hanging out with all the way to nutrition and so on, one of the things that you went past is, you know, what would it be like to kind of have this stuff figured out as a teenager? And Julia, when you said pull the covers over your head, it reminded me like that's, that's actually okay. So maybe that's how you could wrap up Andrea is, is, is telling, a, you know, when this world's always on 24 seven now, uh, maybe you could leave us with one more tip with when it's okay to pull your covers over your head and, and take that break and, and how you weave that in. Definitely. Well, you cannot have high intensity all the time. It's not sustainable. You'll burn out. So you have to have your goals and all these fun activities uh, on a wavelength. And then you have to have your rest. I sometimes just pack it in when I'm having a, a things aren't going right. I'll just go hit the mountain. You have to have your ways of what makes sense for you, whether it's go watch a show, get, get away from it all. So you, it, it's okay to take that break. The brain actually needs recovery. You cannot be on all the time or you will burn out. So definitely have your, your thing. So I try to say, try to have healthy ways of escape. That's why I've always chosen hiking or, you know, go out with your friends, have some healthy breaks that you do so that you get out and you're, so that you're fresh again the next day. So um, try, try to do something for yourself that's going to always progress you towards where you're going. That's right. Yeah, I kind of visualize the phone, like you just plug the phone in when it's on 
one percent or ten percent and it just yeah. needs to charge back up you can't just use it use it use it it goes to zero and you can keep using it or a car that's out of gas you just can't keep using them they have to be refilled yeah, so we have to be refilled too and Definitely. just like just like the phone in the car you have to pay attention to when the fuel is getting low <laughs> so yep. that you don't run out right that's right so Andrea, thank you so much for being here with us today. This has been a really great conversation. And um, I, I, yeah, I really hope that kids start using these strategies because this will really bring them further in life. Yeah, definitely they will win. There's no doubt about it. They will win at life with just a few, not all of them. Just implement a few strategies and you will win. Yeah, don't overwhelm yourself. That's right. Do a few at a time. And then as you get used to it, and as you start to collect these wins, then you're really going to start being excited. That's what lights your fire and gets you out of bed every day. Definitely. So Andrea, tell um, everybody again where we can get a hold of you, what your website is, where they can download the book. Sure, definitely. If you go to Achieve It 360, achieveit360.com. You can see me, you can Google Andrea Samadhi, everything comes up, I'm all over the internet. If you go to my website, right on the front page is the Level Up book, you put in your email and then that is where I would send it to. There's a, a ton of information if you're a parent or a teacher and you want some success strategies for the classroom, I have tons of stuff on my website um, if you wanted to sign up for and just have a look. So. I would, I, I look forward to hearing from anyone. If you have questions, you can go to my contact me page. That's, that's it right there. So I've got a newsroom where we talk about all the things that we've done in the media. Um, you can find out everything you want from the site. That's great. Looks like there's a lot of information there. Well, thank you so much, Andrea. I really appreciate you giving us your time today. Thank you so much, Julia and Donovan. It's been a pleasure to uh, speak with you and, and have a chance to be um, impacting young people all over the world. All over the world. Thank you again. Thank Bye. you, Andrea. Thank you.